Greetings, humanity. I am Shockwave, head of the Decepticon Science Division. I have been instructed to direct a lesson about the element known as cesium. Cesium, spelled in one of two ways, is a group one alkali metal with the atomic number 55. It is the least electronegative element with a value of 0.79. And it is one of only five metal elements that is liquid at a near room temperature. With a melting point of 28.5 degrees Celsius. This makes it possible to be melted by a human hand alone. Cesium is mainly mined from Polosit in its one stable isotope, known as cesium-133. Polosite is mostly found near Ringburnock Lake in Canada. Fourth, another isotope, cesium-137, is often found in waste produced by nuclear reactors. Fortunately, it almost exclusively occurs as a byproduct of nuclear fission. Cesium itself is somewhat hard for the average person to get. Not only due to it being somewhat rare, but also due to its price. At an average cost of 76 dollars per gram. Cesium has uses in drilling, production of radiation detecting equipment and other places. Although Cesium-133 is only mildly toxic. Specifically when ingested, cesium-137 is a radioactive isotope and is thus very dangerous to organic life. Normal symptoms of cesium poisoning include nausea, vomiting, cario, bleeding, coma, and death. Scientists can detect cesium poisoning with radiochemical techniques or by using instrumental neutron activation analysis on a water sample. Potassium iodide tablets are a reliable method of treating cesium poisoning. Said tablets will help with most of the short-term symptoms mentioned previously. Although, some long-term symptoms such as cancer can persist after treatment. Cesium is not only dangerous due to radioactivity or toxicity, but also due to its reactivity. Much like potassium, Cesium reacts with water in a very exclusive manner. Prepare the sample. You have been deceived. That explosion was merely a simulation of what could happen. If we did lower this sample into the water, a portion of this space could be destroyed. I am currently in Western Australia, just outside the town of Newman. On January 11th of this year, a small wheel of CZ-137 fell off the back of a truck whilst being transported. Authorities had to search a 1400 square kilometer area to find the small vial and ensure no one had been exposed to too much of the heavy radiation. Also, civilian exposure to radiation from a sample is nothing compared to the other dangers of cesium-137. The bigger concern would be terrorists or other criminals getting their hands on the substance. Cesium-137 can be used quite effectively to build dirty bombs. A dirty bomb, by definition, is a radiological dispersion device. Essentially, an explosive with the ability to spread radioactive material over an area. So, unlike a typical nuclear weapon, dirty bombs do not generate a mushroom cloud or blast wave. Instead, they skip directly to the fallout phase of a nuclear detonation. However, they are no less dangerous. Fortunately, to date, no dirty bomb has been detonated on Earth, though some have been attempted. Now, this lecture may have led you to believe that cesium is a dangerous and terrifying element. Because it is, at least to an extent, that's what this has all been about. Thankfully, 
Random exposure to cesium is somewhat rare. You probably won't just stumble upon some cesium-137 on a random day. But keep in mind the accidents do happen, and sometimes something ends up where it shouldn't be. The best you can do is stay vigilant. And if you ever do come across some cesium, make sure it stays away from water. And of course, report it to the proper authorities. And with that, I believe our lesson is complete. I hope this has provided some form of entertainment. This is Decepticon Science Officer Shockwave signing off.